Today on Digital Spaceport, interesting question. I'm going to give you some perspective as somebody who has bought a ton of used hardware off of used markets, but also as somebody who has been a seller and even uh, contracted out to Fizon, for instance, for the production of specialty NVMEs in the past. And some of the things I think that we might see if tariffs in their current incantation continue to come down the pipeline and what we're seeing currently as far as prices, what I expect to be the stages that we might see some of these things happening in and what the longer term implications would be. Of course, this is all speculation. These are my best guesses. I look forward to reading your best guesses in the comments below. So be sure to do that. Drop those down there. Thanks to all of our channel members. And also be sure to hit like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this kind of content, this is definitely going to focus on what used gear and hardware might be shaping up to sell like, not just from the United States perspective, but also from an international perspective from countries that may have some interesting uh, possibilities coming around. So yeah, that's the question right there. How screwed are we if we are in nonstop tariff wars with China and the rest of the world? Of course, the United States has some massive tariffs that have come down the pipeline. This could be a flash in the pan. By the time this video gets published, this could all be over. But it is an interesting and hard to plan for scenario that I thought, why not wade into with a little bit of I wouldn't say I'm a subject matter expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I have bought a lot of stuff international. I've shipped a lot of sh stuff international, and I do understand customs to the point that it's like, oh, customs. And I think a lot of people are about to figure that out themselves also. Let's take a look at some current hardware and trends that we're seeing on used markets. So I put together a page for each one of the builds that we've gone through on this channel that's four of them and basically i have not seen a tremendous increase in prices for any of this used hardware so we have our 150 dollars kind of super low-end budget build here this is good for ai and general home lab it uh is if you look at the price category 150 dollars that it's pegged at eight gigabytes of vram a couple of ways you could go there to get eight gigabytes of vram and we'll take a, a look at uh some of the hardware here especially but yeah the chassis the gpus there are some links on the website and you can find links to these pages in the descriptions below also so far this has not changed tremendously and you're looking at about 165 dollars for that system instead of 150 dollars of course i was just gathering some more statistics on the tesla p4 which is what i am currently rocking inside my micro build and you can see that over here as prox one and you can see everything that i'm running in prox one it's a it's a lot of stuff that's running of course i got nv top over here and you can see that tesla p4 is running inside there but yeah we're not seeing any tremendous spike in prices as far as 7050s if you're interested you can follow along with the software guide that i put together recently on lxes and proxmox and open web ui and olama to get a complete up and running server for 150 dollars you can actually get this up and running and it performs pretty pretty damn well. You can, of course, check out all those other videos that I've got in the uh, history here. Next up, we're checking out the uh, kind of lower budget 350. This is a really good performer if you're looking for cramming a lot of stuff and having a dedicated GPU that is externally powered. You're going to see a performance uh, benefit and you're also going to see a price benefit once you get to that point. But yeah, you're looking at right around $319 on this one. And so this is a $350 build is what this one's built at. And from what I can see, it looks like there's good deals on 3620s. Uh, 30, 60, 12 gigabytes right now. I pegged them at 250 and it looks like they're coming in somewhere around 225. And so, yeah, like I was saying, I'm not seeing yet in used markets, specifically in the United States, any sort of a major impetus for uh, there to be good prices. As a matter of fact, I, I bought a R720 or a R730 XD today. So hopefully that gets here pretty good, pretty quick. And I got that for under $200 under $200 after offer. And that was with a uh, 3.5 inch trays missing, but 3.5 inch of course is the R720 XD strongest format. You can get them in the 2.25, but you know, that's a lot of SSDs and stuff. And I really don't need that. I do need a really good replacement for the R720 XD as an upgrade though. So that's what that's gonna be. 
So yeah, you can see the 319 for the 350 build. So we're not seeing any tremendous price impacts there yet. And I'm gonna tell you why after we get through kind of reviewing these, why I think what we're seeing is manifesting the way it is. Here is uh, the Z440. This is actually a build that I'm gonna have out here pretty quickly. Uh, and this one just maybe originally, maybe unoriginally has two 3060s, 12 gigabytes each. That gets you 24 gigabytes of VRAM though. That's pretty impressive. And this comes out at about $730 right now. And that's going to be a $750 price point that I peg that one at. And of course, the big one here, the quad 3090 rig. And of course, the thing that's made those more expensive is the 3090s themselves. But I've been watching for the past several days and the price on 3090s is actually coming down. So that's a good sign. We definitely want to see that. Now, as far as 4090s, I'm seeing that their price is coming down a little bit also, but the 3090s definitely coming down really fast right now. And so I think that's a good sign that things are moving in the right direction for used GPU markets because we saw some good supply uptake of AMD, especially in their latest cards. And of course, the NVIDIA lineup, well, I still think actually probably the best power play is if you can get one of the 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte GPUs when they come out, supposedly around the 16th or something of April, that might be the best that you could get. Does have about 450 gigabytes per second of system VRAM to uh, CUDA cores bandwidth. Very impressive and should be able to do pretty darn good in inference and 16 gigabytes if they can get close to a reasonable MSRP. That is a pretty compelling argument to be made that those might be the best thing to go with. But even breaking out and looking at all the component parts for the quad rig, the only thing that was inflated from when we put this together originally, I think it was nine and a half months ago, is the 3090s. And that is actually a substantial amount of price inflation, but the total price came out to 56.74. There were some things that actually had gone down in price recently. So that's good to see also. PCIe 4 risers have been a little bit cheaper uh, since we've got now PCIe 5 risers out there. I'm not sure that there's electrically a difference between their connectivity, but eventually I'll get myself a PCIe 5 GPU and be able to test that out. And when I do, I'll be sure to let you guys know as well. So talking a little bit more broadly about this. So I bought a bunch of NVMEs that were specialty NVMEs. They were PSLC drives from Fizon directly. And these came through all the traditional channels of a supply chain, long lead times, pre-funding everything, escrow for all shipping, escrow for all customs. So these things had to be done, and especially because they had to fill out the paperwork on their end. So there's going to be kind of two classes of sellers in the world who are in the supply chain, the larger corporations and the larger sellers of used goods. Somebody like Tug, for instance, on you know a place like eBay, pretty reputable. They're going to have a lot better process pipeline for the, how they handle paperwork. And there's a couple things to consider that are going to come down the pipeline. So there's layers, not necessarily just one big that lands on a uh, seller that might be in China or Vietnam or, you know, various other countries, but every country right now does have a pretty onerous and it's going to raise definitely the cost of getting products to you because the seller is going to be the person that's the bearer of responsibility. Unless you're filling out your own customs forms, which you can opt to do, but that's going to take a lot of knowledge, to be honest with you. It's not quite as easy as you might think it is unless you've ever done it. There's a lot that you actually have to do to import, especially larger things. And if you get something wrong, that can lead to long delays. So the bigger people will have this understood. They'll know how to fill this out, but they're going to have an increased burden that lands on May 2nd of 2025. This one's very important because this is called the Diminis. And that's basically you get $800. You don't have to do all this custom stuff. And that's easy for people. Now, there's a little bit of you know tax that they already pay on that right now, but this is going to become a much larger tax. And when you're looking at something like, let's go ahead and look like, at a MZ32AR0 motherboard. I already have seen this is this is interesting. The price has changed on these a little bit, uh, but the availability is going to be interesting to watch. And you're going to notice that most of the sellers are going to start having 
notifications about, hey, you need to make sure that the customs is done. Buyer is responsible for customs clearance and payment of duties. So that could be a pretty big issue because if you're having to handle that yourself, there is a lot that is involved in that. So you want to make sure that you are finding bigger sellers that can help you successfully navigate those waters if you are buying something from China. And for instance, if you look at $569 right now, that does not factor in the uh, de minimis tax that will be happening on everything very shortly. So there will be no minimums, the speed, speed pack and cables and stuff like that. I mentioned this recently and then actually not even that recently, also another time in the context of tariffs and the likelihood of tariffs. And if there were things that were small that you wanted, you probably should go ahead and stock up on them. And let me tell you, your time is fast approaching being out. And definitely, I would say I learned a lot by attending a Flexport uh, talk that they did recently, and they had some tax experts. It seems like the capacity for shipping is closing down, like it is just taken, 100% of it's taken. So if you don't already have stuff on a ship and sailing by the end of, I believe it's today, then you're going to incur, I think it's 10%. If you have it, you know, that's that's pretty big. That's, that's, that's pretty big. If it's not, then it's going to be even bigger. So that's going to really hit people. And so full implications of tariffs are coming rapidly to the markets. Now, Flexport said they saw that there was almost a doubling of warehousing capacity that their customers were bringing online. So that's a lot of additional storage that has been taken into account. But I don't think anybody anticipated this level of impact. So what does this mean and what is the strategy? I think we're going to see a couple waves of things happen. Let's say in the next couple of weeks, I think we're going to see some really good panic opportunities where people that are, uh, let's say cash strapped possibly are going to be like, I need to get rid of thing really quick. So it may pay good dividends if you are able to watch your eBay marketplace, especially if there's certain things that you want to put on a wait list or, or a watch list or something like that. This is a good time to do that and just keep an eye out is that thing going on sale? I don't think that's going to happen on all the markets out there, especially not new markets. I think that is going to be a little bit later. We'll talk about that here in a second. But in used markets, I think there's opportunity for buyers. Now, if you're looking internationally, that's probably going to be even a little bit better in the long term if the tariffs stay in place. We'll see how it pans out. But if it does all happen really quick, it could all be gone and this could all be moved really quickly. But if you are an international buyer, there may be some great opportunities as longer term, different markets are serviced more heavily and more geared towards servicing those markets uh, instead of the U.S. market for things like specifically third party parts like used parts like uh, MZ32 AR0s. Especially I think about people that I know in places like Australia typically hit pretty hard by tariffs and shipping and like especially shipping. I've shipped some stuff into Australia. It's very, very crazy. So those people might actually keep their eyes open. There could be better deals coming on the horizon to you as it becomes more economically viable to sell. So a lot of sellers are going to approach things from like, where is the most economically viable place that I can quickly sell a lot of blank? And that's been the United States for so long. I think that's about to shift here if we see this manifest into a long running tariff battle that definitely could shift. And that would mean that third, third party countries outside the United States could see a really good opportunity, those people to acquire stuff that maybe that just wasn't offered. It wasn't marketed to those specific markets in the past could actually be something you see. Now, moving outside of that window into, let's say, weeks out, maybe weeks to months, the May 2nd uh, Dominus kind of getting cut off there. That's going to hit and that will be pretty big. So buyers of things like networking technology and switches and all sorts of other stuff that maybe under $800 right now are going to be okay. But as soon as that lands, you're going to have customs, duties, tariffs, all sorts of stuff. Everybody's going to be in a bit of a tizzy also because the additional overhead of all the paperwork that has to be done. That's not going to be trivial. That is not going to be trivial. So that will definitely impact secondary sales markets pretty heavily. If you were looking at anything, the uh, window of being able to acquire it is fast closing in my estimation. I'm no longer buying stuff from China uh, and expecting it to show up in a timely fashion. Luckily, there's still good used supply in the United States. So 
I talked about briefly, just from a U.S. perspective, the near term, there could be some panic opportunities as people sell off. The longer term used market perspective, I think, could see prices inflate as the cost of keeping machines running longer becomes more viable for businesses. So certain classes of used gear that could still feasibly be put into production use or keep that machine alive for another year probably becomes more and more viable. Does that impact retail GPUs? And eh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, but there are a lot of other things out there in used markets, especially if you buy a lot of Flash, if you buy a lot of things like Epics, Threadrippers, uh, all this stuff, that it could become more and more viable to see and expect a increase in price, especially domestically inside the United States, as businesses turn to used markets to keep hardware running a little bit longer. A couple just tidbits that are interesting right now that you may not know about about the tariffs like there is no exemption for gpus none yeah the chips sure but that's not the finished product and it matters where the finished product comes out of so this is also the kind of the big thing that got closed up in places like vietnam and as somebody who has bought a ton of stuff from vietnam i can tell you they have an economy that is about to be absolutely shaken 180 degrees and i've already read that there's like massive amounts of dealing that they're trying to make happen because they became a shipping and logistics hub for products to be remanufactured, recertified, or just kind of shell shipped through in many, many instances out of countries that had uh, existing tariffs. So this is going to have massive impact there. Things like used hard drives uh, come out of a couple different countries, for instance. I've sold quite a few of those in the past. And like the remanufacturing process meaningfully being shipped into a different country inside the United States is very unlikely to happen because the tooling and just the nature of hard drives, hard drive companies are not looking at future investment in hard drives and saying, that's the best spend for you know our, our money. I mean, Flash is kind of the future. Uh, there's other technologies out there, but definitely flash is kind of going to be the future. And so platter based hard drives getting larger and larger and fewer and fewer of them coming about is something we're already seeing. So there's going to be some interesting dynamics in my opinion. And let me say again, in my opinion, that we see happening in the very near future. And so keeping your eyes out for deals, especially in the next week or so, maybe two weeks, I think there's going to be some pretty good deals. I think there'll be some people that are anticipating they're going to be cash strapped and they may pump out a lot of inventory for really cheap just to burn it out and to have cash instead of having product. I think that'll be something that maybe if you're positioned well, you might be able to capitalize upon. I know that I am keeping my eye out for some networking stuff. I do not need luckily any more networking cables or anything like that, but I would also like to get another server that is an epic server i wanted to get a 9000 series epic server so i i need to bleep or get off the pot on that one immediately if i'm going to do it because i expect that those things are going to be definitely in demand for businesses so you're going to be competing with businesses who might not be able to go to dell they might not be able to go to hp hp and dell they don't they don't make everything here like those things that they're bringing in the supply chain are going to have a lot of additional cost to them that's going to end up hitting their customers and lowering demand in the long run so yeah keeping that server or something running probably something a lot of businesses are going to think about and i bet a lot of the people in this audience are are thinking the same themselves also so let me know what your plan is for scooping and for hoarding and for getting rid of are you panicked are you optimistic are you think that this is going to work out okay i'm i'm a little bit in the skeptic uh, box at the moment and that's just because there's so much at play but i think that a lot of things will get worked out but the biggest one is china and i think that's going to be very very hard to have that one work out uh in a short time frame so i think there will be some definite impacts of this Hopefully they manifest just in the period of time where people, you know, might be like, ah, I got to sell some stuff off, uh, but they don't manifest long term. If they do watch out, we could be in for some really rough times. Everybody have a great one and I will check you out next time.